We thank you that you loved us enough to show us how to be like you every single day. You have given us instruction what to do. Father Lord, I said thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, as I pray, God, we open our hearts to you. Let your word penetrate us. Let revelation knowledge flow. Illuminate and give us grace to understand and to change. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This is maybe part number six. I lost the count on what we call Sermon on the Mountain or Teaching on the Mountain or Beatitude or How to Be Like Jesus or What to Do So You Can Become Righteous better than them Pharisees. Because their righteousness, they say, they taught what you do. That's all God is interested. He's not interested in your heart. But Jesus came to show you if it is in your heart, you must act what is in your heart. So, how to be like Jesus? I, I was just sitting here thinking, you know, people, uh, we, I don't testify, at least in this church they don't testify. Otherwise, you go some places and they testify. I thank the Lord. I am saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, then I will say, go sit down, uh, because you don't have a clue what it means to be sanctified, and you have no clue what to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So if you don't have a clue what it means to be filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, besides speaking in tongue, uh, come on Wednesday nights, because we are tearing that joker up. And that will show you, you are filled with the Holy Ghost or not. Just by running your mouth and say, I speak in tongues, doesn't qualify you that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You had an experience. You had an event in your life. But Jesus said, continue yes. in my word. Yes, so if you don't continue, yes. uh, you just bunch of noise. Well, anyway, uh, Matthew 5. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was sad, the disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What we came to conclusion is, poor in the spirit is the man or a woman or a person who totally depends on God. For anything and everything. He's not a self-made man. For everything. He said, Lord, without you, I am nothing. The question is this. If you want to be like Jesus, do you depend on God for anything and everything? Or your security is in your savings and in, in your job? Or your 401k. Or your husband. Or your wife. Or your rich uncle. Or your boss. Or your job. Second one. There are eight qualities. Second one. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. More meaning, do you cry over when you mess up? Or you just sweep it under grace? Hello? I know some people don't even feel convicted. 
Don't even feel bad. Oh, it is covered by the grace. It is already forgiven anyway. Uh, you're not mourning. Is your heart broken? Because when your heart is broken, when you mourn, God is closer to you. Because David say God is closer. What is Psalms? He say he's closer to those who are of a broken heart. Number three, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Go ahead and have your seats, please. Last week, I introduced this subject. Blessed are the meek. Meek meaning gentle, humble. It does not mean you are pushover or spineless or coward. Meek meaning Strength under control. Like a wild horse, wild stallion. When a cowboy gets him, he puts beads in his mouth. Controls him. So all that strength can be used for the master. And we mentioned last week, there were only two people mentioned in the whole Bible who were meek. Gentle, humble, talking about Moses. And we learned that Moses was trusting God. So, are you trusting God? Meek and gentle. Second one, we look at the life of Jesus. And we went into John the 13th chapter. And we came up with some of the situation here. And I made a statement saying, gentle. Humble, meek is a sign of a true servant of God. Don't walk around saying, yeah, I'm a servant of God and you are arrogant. Like one time I have made a statement that you strut like a NBC peacock. Did you show up? Talk about you and you and you alone. So humility is a sign of a servant. Meaning humble people, gentle people serve. If you don't serve, uh, you are not humble. Meaning you are not like Christ. Because Jesus said, I believe in the Mark of 10 chapter, he said, for the Son of God, Son of Man came to serve and not to be served. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, be the servant of all. Question is this, do you serve or are you waiting for somebody to serve you? And you say, oh, uh, when I went through the new membership class, because you told us to serve, how many weeks? Ten weeks. So I serve. I went through a new membership class, and then I served for 10 weeks. Then I became a member, and then I decide not to serve. You are not humble. You're not gentle. And like I always say that, why is it it is the same people always serving? And why is the same people who come and eat and go? And some people just come to eat. I'm teaching you how to be righteous. How to be Christ-like. Then we say uh, humility is unannounced. Jesus just got up and started washing the feet of Jesus. Meaning, you all don't announce, okay, now I'm going to go to the kitchen and I'm going to serve. Or I'm going to go to nursery and I'm going to serve. Or I'm going to do this thing. No. Humility, gentle people, meek people, humble people, they just go ahead and do it. Because they know their reward is in heaven. Because if you do it just to be rewarded by men, Jesus said, when they pat you on your back, he said, that's your reward. But you do it to be seen by God, not seen by others. Question is this, you're serving to be seen by 
man or seen by God. Humility is willing to receive. Some of you give, 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 but uh, when somebody wants to give you something, oh no, I'm all right, that's pride. You think it is, uh, it is humility? No, it is subtle pride. Humility treats everyone equal. Does not play favoritism. Like if I say, uh, I need a, need, need a bottle of water, maybe 10 of you will go uh, and, and, and figure it out where to get the water. Huh? But if somebody else asks for water, he say, uh, what did you drink before you came? <laughs> See, we serve selective. We serve selective. But Jesus said totally different. He said that if you want to serve, serve the least. Yes. Serve the least. So that's what we talk about, about, uh, about humility. And then, uh, let me just go ahead and take about five minutes and talk about this. Then, then let's uh, talk about Paul. Paul was very meek, very humble. Philippians 3 and 3 says, I have no confidence in the flesh. So when you are humble, you are gentle, you are meek, you say that, you know what, I have no confidence in the flesh. But what we do as soon as we come out, we start talking, um, I have a master's, and I have a PhD, and I have done this, this, this. Who are you trying to impress? Just go ahead and say what you got to say, then sit down. But we don't. We use our flesh to impress. That, that, that will tweet good. Huh? You use your flesh to impress, but flesh should serve. If you, oh God, Lord Almighty, write this one down. If you want to use flesh to serve, you will serve the flesh. Wow. Did you hear that, what I just said? If you want to use your flesh to serve others, you will serve the flesh. Some of you might want to listen to this CD again so you can catch it, what I just made. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, I am that I am by the grace of God, gentle people, meek people, humble people, know without God you are nothing. I am that I am by the grace of God. Or you say, look here. I work hard, went to school, went to college, I work hard. Bible says, give glory to God. You are what you are by the grace of God. Huh? And when he comes, look at here, he was the greatest apostle. The Lord appeared to him several times. Uh, how many times he appeared to you? Case closed. He wrote three-fourths of the New Testament. And you know what he said? Born among the sinners, I'm the chiefest. Wow. Meaning he never forgot his encounter with God when he got saved. That was 1 Timothy 1.15. Born among the women, I am the chief among the sinners. But you know what? You walk around saying you all that. Ephesians 3, 8. Watch it now. He says, when he compare himself with the sinners, he says, born among the women, I am the chiefest among the sinners. Then he comes in a church and says, among the saints. I'm the least. Wow. 
Remember he said, I am that I am by the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Then he said, 1 Timothy 1, 15. Born among the women, among the sinners. I am the cheapest among the sinners. Then he comes in a church and say, in the church, among the saints, I am the least. That is Ephesians 3 and 8. And then he said, let me talk about the authority. Let me talk about the apostles. Then he said, and among the apostles, I am not even worthy to be called. Listen to me. He said, I am not even worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. I am not even worthy to be called an apostle. But nowadays, you got 20 people in your church and you are an apostle. Don't be so quiet because I'm preaching too good. I mean, I have. When you go to the minister's meeting, huh? There are more apostles than pastors. Too many chiefs, no Indians. Everybody is either an apostle or a prophet. I said, where are the pastors then? See, they glory in a title. But when you are an apostle, hey, you be even scared to call yourself an apostle. The one who was indeed an apostle, he said, you know what? <laughs> Please, don't, don't put it on me. But nowadays, there's nobody humble. Passing our business card with nobody asked. I'm a prophet and I'm an evangelist. I'm a pastor. Go sit down and be a servant. Gentle people are servants. That's what he's saying. Well, if you ask uh, John the Baptist, born among the women, he was the greatest among the prophets. And you know what he says? John 3 and 30. He said, let him increase. And let me decrease. Who is a gentleman? Gentleman, a kind man, a meek person is the one saying it is all about Jesus. It's not about me. As long as he gets the glory, what difference does it make? But you know what? We want to cut it short. You want. You like the devil. Hello? Well, that's how it started. Why should they give him the praise and worship? I am the leader. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to short circuit this. You all bow down and worship me. And you know where he wind up. So ask yourself a question. Are you poor in spirit? Are you the one mourning? Crying over the situation in your life? Not only when somebody dies. You know, that's how we think. That scripture is only for the funeral. Is you crazy? There was nobody, there was no casket, nobody had died and Jesus is talking. But we use that. Oh, go ahead and mourn because you will see them. Uh, be quiet. This is everyday life. When you do something ignorant, stupid, you know you're doing it. And the Holy Ghost just. And you know what you do? You just shut it aside. You're not mourning. Okay. So, like I said last week, blessed are the meek, gentle, and humble, for the whole earth belongs to them. So now question is this. Pastor, I know I hear you. But how can? I become gentle and a humble and a meek. What should I do? What I shouldn't do? I'm glad you asked. You ready? Let's roll. Because gentleness, meekness, quietness, 
humility will diffuse the conflict and argument. Oh, let it sink. And I'm going I'm to look at some of you, including me. Pastor, what are you saying? When there is something going on, like an argument, what do you do? And especially, you, you know, we, we're going to talk a whole lot about three Sundays on Blessed Are You When You Are Persecuted. Uh, uh, we ain't going to talk about that because uh, you cannot handle it right now, like Jesus said. Just let me give you just a little bit here today. Let me ask you a question. How do we handle argument? I said, how can I handle a conflict? Oh, you wouldn't like this. I'm trying to teach you how to be like Jesus. Okay, let me ask you a question. This is a Lord that don't ask anybody. Just look straight and keep smiling. Huh? What do you do when somebody raises their voice? What do you do? I said, don't say nothing. Just keep looking. What do you do? Don't you raise your voice at me. And you're raising more than they're talking to you. A any guilty one here? A gentle person, when others raise their voice, you lower your voice. That will make them more mad. And they will wonder, What's wrong with this? Oh. Come on now. They will wonder. Okay. In other words, how to be humble, how to be gentle, meaning stay calm. But we, oh Lord Jesus, don't tell me to be Calm. Do you know what? I mean, we bite their heads off and don't even blink. <laughs> and we come here. I love the Lord. I'm saved and I'm sanctified. I'm filled with. The you better shut your mouth. You know you ain't none of that. <laughs> How many of us know we got a ways to go to be like Jesus? And this is the first lesson. This is a kindergarten lesson he's telling us. He want to be like me. Be humble in the spirit. More. Stay calm. Uh, I know you ain't talking to me. Okay, let me give you a scripture. You know because you're going to ask. I, uh, Pastor, all that noise, give me a scripture. You ready? All right. Proverbs 15 and 1. Proverbs 15 and 1 says, A gentle answer deflects anger, but a harsh words make temper flare. Try it this week. With your kids. They're crazy, and you are crazier than them. <laughs> well, Pastor, if I'm gentle, they will run all over me. No, they won't. Because Jesus promised. Meaning, strength under control. you the adult. But when you get mad, you forgot. And you get down, start fighting like kids. <laughs> and so when somebody comes, you don't even know who the mom and dad and, and the kids is. All of you.
So you want to be like Jesus, huh? A gentle answer deflects anger, but a harsh word may temper flare. You run your mouth and you take a gallon of gasoline and pouring it in. It blows up. And here you're supposed to be a child of God. And when you don't act, they say, wait a minute. Uh, what happened? You used to fuss and bite and tell me, and now what happened? Oh, let me tell you something. It's not me, it's Jesus. <laughs> that will open a door for opportunity for you to witness. But you know it ain't going to happen. Because he got to have a last word. They nobody, you know, most of the guys in, in a jail, I talk to them. I said, like, well, what happened? Uh, they nobody going to disrespect me. Oh, so disrespect got you here, huh? That's the word on the street. That nobody going to disrespect me. You come to the church and with that haughty attitude, you sit in a chair. That nobody going to disrespect me in this joint. But I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Wednesday night, I closed my message. On being filled with the Holy Ghost. When you control your mouth, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, you're just full. A gentle answer. And let me tell you, it is not easy. It, oh God, Lord Almighty, everything inside you is going to rise. Your blood pressure will rise. You will change your facial expression. <laughs> and Bible say, no, you're not like me. So do you really want to be a Christian? <laughs> and you know, nobody going to tell me nothing. You do something, and I shove it right back at you. Good measure, press down, check it together. Running over, I give it to you. <laughs> I hear a lot of hmm, hmm, hmm today. <laughs> I haven't heard this many hmms in a long time. So do you really want to be like Jesus? Monday, something had happened. Somebody had made me mad way down south. Had made me mad. And Lily was here, Vanessa was there. Uh, okay, I'm not going to say it. Uh, but uh, I got a piece. Uh, whatever you want to say it, uh, I pack myself with a piece. Spell it any way you want to. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Vanessa says, uh, Pastor, where are you going? None of your business. <laughs> they knew why, because we had prayed that morning. <laughs> Come on, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all. Don't act like you don't. Oh, God, pastor has a meeting at 1 o'clock. Lord Jesus, thank you for your spirit. We light him, guide him. Oh, God, da, 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 da. Say, uh, I'm on my way. What you going to do? None of your business. What you going to None. And while I was out of the office, he said, remember what the Bible said. Don't want to hear what the Bible says. That's the last thing you want to hear when you made what the Bible says. Yeah. She's going to stand in the front. Of, you know, my office was across the, her office was here. As she's standing, remember what the Bible says. A short answer. A short answer deflects the anger. Oh, Jesus. It was a long drive from here all the way south. And I was thinking, I said, Lord God Almighty. It was hard. 
but I didn't behave like a child of God. <laughs> and I'm the pastor, y'all. Do you follow what I'm saying? It's not easy. People say, oh, uh-uh, it's not easy. It's a straight and a narrow road. I'm telling you, it's not easy to walk on straight and narrow in your own strength. But it is easy when you say, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Ah, God will help you. But some of you, you say, God, I got this. I check with you when I need something bigger. I, this one, I got it. Are you gentle? Are you meek? Are you humble? Ecclesiastes 10 and 4 says, A gentle, a quiet spirit overcomes even great mistakes. You messed up. Don't fuss over it. So we're going to check this thing this week. I'm going to make a nice index card that I want to carry it every day. Am I poor in spirit today? Click. And we're going to see at the end of the day uh, how many eight out of eight you can get. I don't want no card. <laughs> you know I'm going to plunk it. All right, number two. Whoa. Okay, number two. Number one, it diffuses the conflict. It settles the argument. Number two, it will disarm the critics. Because if you are living like Jesus, they're going to criticize you. And especially for a person like me. Huh? That, that's why he, it don't bother me. Sometimes I'm not invited to so many meetings because uh, I say what I say. I don't play politics. I, 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 that's just me. And so when I take a stand for something, I will be criticized. You should be criticized. You know why? Because they were ready to fight. So when you're gentle, you never ever retaliate. Pastor, I'm a human being. So you are a human being. I thought you were saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. What happened to that? When you are humble, you don't get in a debate or arguments. Book of Proverbs has a whole lot to say about nagging. Nagging woman and nagging man. Bible says it's better to stay on the top of the house rather than a, a nagging woman. All right? People just, they just, I don't know. I have met some people always mad. Looking for an argument. I, uh, what's wrong with you? Somebody hurts you. So w why are you taking out on me? You got a divorce. Your husband did something to me. Uh, God help you too. How do you handle your critics? How do you handle your critics? Well, let me ask you something. Does anybody criticize you because you are a child of God? Or if they don't, you're one of them. You're not going to take a stand. Bible says, and those who take a stand in the last days, you will be criticized. What are you saying, Pastor? 
all I am saying, have a tough skin and a tender heart. Do you have a tough skin and a tender heart? Listen to this. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. Because some of you are not going to believe until I give you a scripture. And some of you are going to say, I don't care what the scripture says. I'm going to. <laughs> First Corinthians 4.13. First Corinthians 4.13. Paul say, we react or respond, appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Wow. When somebody makes up a lie and tells a lie about you, how do you respond? Paul say you should appeal gently. Second Timothy two twenty five. Second Timothy two twenty five says that be gentle and instruct and teach all those who oppose the truth. And listen to this. 2 Timothy 2 and 24. Uh, by the way, how many of servants of the Lord are in the house? Uh -huh, maybe three of you. What happened to you all? How many of the servants of the Most High Lord are here? I'm not taking pastors. Every child of God is a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, thank you for explaining to me. You are ready for this? 2 Timothy 2 and 24 says, For the servant of the Lord never quarrels, but he is kind and gentle to all. Question is this, are you a quarrelsome person? How many of you need help like me? That means we got a ways to go, folks. Yes, but how are we going to change when we don't know what to change? Yes. Meaning, be kind, be gentle. And Lord God, this is the one I every day I have to fight with tooth and nail and everything else in me. I wrote it with a red ink pen because it is me. It says with a red ink pen, be patient with difficult people. Jehovah help me. That's me. Every day God has, oh God, Lord Almighty. Just to give you an example, huh? I don't know nobody but to talk about me. Sister Lee goes to the dentist, maybe 30 years in the same dentist. So I went to her, I said, let me change my dentist, go to him. I went there first time. And she said, oh, they take you in and you be out in 30 minutes. I'm sitting there for 35 and ain't nobody talking to me. Now see, brother, my gentle here. And they know I'm a pastor. <laughs> so I stood up, very nice, gently. Pay. I say, what's going on here? And he says, well, this person was running his mouth. I said, who's in charge? And that person was talking. He was still talking in front of the reception. And I said, who runs the joint, he or you? So it was justified. No. <laughs> but but Sister Lee said that, see, see this thing? That's the thing I have. So everywhere I go, I, I will run into it. Get in a line. That's why I don't like to go to store. As soon as I get in a line, well, I 30. The guy in front of me with a 20. 
And the little girl over there don't know what the price is, so she gets on the phone, da, da, da. So there's another guy looking for this. I said, forget it, I've got it. <laughs> okay, am I the only one? <laughs> I, gotta, I, I confess I have a ways to go. Because I'm very precise. Boom, 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 boom. I'm, I'm never a procrastinator. Never. And here you run with the people. Lord Jesus. Say, God is trying to teach me, boy. You be like me. I said, you know what? They live with these people. <laughs> Never mind. Driving. I'm the most gentle driver ever. And you know what my wife said? They can't hear you. Oh, God, Lord <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Blessed are <laughs> the gentle, the meek. Folks, we got a ways to go. We got to work this joker. We got to work this joker. Okay, my last point, number three. Uh, uh, I got about ten more. Uh, yeah, I, I got quite a few. But let, let me clo close with this one. Gentleness is persuasive. Well, I'll say that word. Gentleness is persuasive. Proverbs 25, 15 says, prob by the way, all these uh, scriptures that I'm quoting, they are from New Living Translation. Your King James or might be different, but here is the way I understand uh, what it says. Uh, Proverbs 25, 15, he says, by patience, a gentleness, gentle talk can persuade a prince. And a soft speech can break bones. Did you hear me? A soft speech can break the bone. But you don't want to have a soft speech. You want to get a baseball bat. Come on, folks. You want to take a baseball bat and break their bones. But Bible say, if you just use a soft word, that will work stronger than a baseball bat. We all flunked today. <laughs> okay, let me break this one down. By patience, by gentleness, by gentle talk, can persuade a prince. And a soft speech can break bones. Wait a minute. Cancel the word prince because we ain't got no prince. Uh, this is Pastor Stephen's translation. You are ready? Yeah. All right. Be patient. Gentle. A gentle talk can persuade your boss. Oh, I hit the nerve here. Your boss, your CEO, your ruler, or your supervisor. How many times I hear from people, uh, the one who are born again and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, God, Lord Almighty, they can stand them supervisors. Or the one who in charge over you. Because when they say something, they ain't no going to be able to tell me nothing. Then you go with your hand up here. Oh, oh, no. Uh -uh. Remember, when the one in charge over you is hard or whatever is there, huh? a soft answer. Soft answer will do wonders for you. Try it. Proverbs 16, 21. Wise words are persuasive words. Wise words. Meaning you are wise when you speak softly. You are a fool if you holler and scream. 
Okay, last two statements, then we go home. Screaming never works. Screaming never works. Watch some of the commercials on TV about your car. Oh, you're going to watch it now. Huh? Some of the appliances, they be screaming. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Write this one down. Don't be crude or rude. Again, I'm talking to the born again, sanctified Holy Ghost people. Don't be rude or crude. And this is my last of last statement. Write this one down and tweet it today. I am never persuasive when I am abrasive. You know, I don't know all these words. I learned from someone. I am never persuasive when I am abrasive. Meaning what? When you try to prove your point and you ain't got no point. Because you're screaming and hollering. Destroy that. Amen. I'll see you all today. Thank you.